Howdy. We're going to keep talking about linear defects in materials. And what we're going to talk about in this particular video are disclinations. So disclinations are different from dislocations, so we have to describe them differently. Um, and disclinations occur especially prevalently in liquid crystals. So this is an example um, of a liquid crystal film um, that is being imaged between um, two cross polarizing filters. Um, and each of these uh, little points where we see black and white regions intersecting um, is a disclination that is uh, perpendicular um, to the, um, the, the plane of the board that we're looking at. Um, so disclinations are, um, again, you see them especially prevalently in liquid crystals because um, they are um, associated with things like twists and splays um, that you're, you're more likely to see um, when we have these um, sort of weakly bounded together um, fixed units that are, that are free to point in particular directions. Okay, so how do we describe disclinations? Um, and this is a schematic um, of a particular disclination. Remember, liquid crystals... Um, they are, uh, they have an anisotropic shape, they're not spherical, um, and so these are examples of rod-like liquid crystals. Um, and a particular region of liquid crystals has what's called a director. And so that's sort of a vector that's pointing in the average direction uh, of that, that particular region uh, of liquid crystal. So up here, if I look at all the different liquid crystals in this box, you know, there's going to be some random variability. But in general, that director um, is maybe pointing this way. Um, and uh, disclination, again, occurs when we have rotations in that director. So over here, it's pointing to the left. Down here, uh, it's pointing down. And over to the right-hand side, it's pointing to the right. So anytime these directors are rotating on us, we have to have some particular defect. And that defect is called a disclination. And again, a disclination is a linear defect. Um, and so in this particular image, it's coming in and out of the plane of the board. So how do we describe disclinations? And the first thing that we talk about is the disclination strength. So this is an example of something that has a disclination strength of one. Um, and and the, the disclination strength is given by this term, but basically what it means is if we keep track of um, the orientation of those directors, how does that orientation change as we complete a full circuit around the disclination? Um, so let's look at our math. 1 over 2 pi, that's fine, that's just a constant. We're looking at something changing, d phi d theta, um, around a path that goes all the way around this angle d theta. And so um, r is a vector that points from the center out some distance. Um, and when I'm, it, uh, theta is the angle between r and sort of a fixed reference frame. So if, if my fixed reference um, direction is pointing to the right here, um, then an angle of theta equals zero uh, would be here. Uh, an angle of theta equals pi over 2 is up here, um, and so forth. And so if we're integrating d phi d theta all the way around d theta, that means basically we're kind of keeping track of how does that director point um, as we, again, as that vector r um, makes a loop all the way around. So as I start off at zero, and I go all the way up to two pi. Um, and so, you know, if I can simplify this expression, and I can just say, what is the total number of rotations that that director has performed as I go all around the loop? Um, and so again, this angle uh, phi or phi is, is given by um, the angle between the director and the same reference direction that I've defined uh, at the outset. So this is my reference direction, uh, and this is the same reference direction. So how do we do this? Well, basically we walk around the loop and we count how many full or partial rotations 
has that director undergone? And then we divide by 2 pi, and that gives us the disclination strength. So let's look at an example here. Um, our our uh, radius, our, our sorry, our vector r is going to go from um, you know the center out some distance, um, and so this initial theta value is is zero, and uh, the the um, vector r is pointing in the same direction as the director. So at this point, the angle phi is also zero. And what we're going to do is I'm going to slowly walk us around as we rotate through here. So let's back up. Um, what I want you to do is, as we go through this, keep track of the direction that the director, this little red vector here, is pointing. And specifically count how many full rotations it does. Um, so right, you know, we're going to start off with uh, the director pointing to the right. And so that's a value of phi equals zero. By the time I get up here, the director is pointing up. So that's a value of phi over two. Um, if I keep spinning around, it's pointing to the left, so that angle is, is uh, pi. Uh, uh, at, uh, you know, when I'm pointing down, uh, the director is also pointing down, uh, so that's 3 pi over 2. And then when I come all the way back here, um, the, the angle, you know, it's, it's increased all the way and now it's 2 pi. So basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in reverse here for a second. Um, as I move around this loop, that director does a complete 2 pi rotation. Um, and so, so phi total is 2 pi. So let's watch that happen. It's rotating. So it's gone pi over 2. It's gone pi. It's gone uh, 3 pi over 2. And it's back to the beginning. So, you know, um, if the... The total uh, angle um, that the director has rotated through is 2 pi, then that disclin uh, disclination strength is given by 2 pi over 2 pi, or s equals 1. So let's look at a slightly different case. Um, so, I mean, these are continuous lines, but again, it's supposed to picture, um, or, or I want you to picture, uh, liquid crystals uh, where at any particular position, um, those messages, those individual blocks, the director is now perpendicular to this ve vector r. So for example, right here, the director is, let's say it's pointing up. It's perpendicular to r. So take a second to think about this, and if you need to, you can, you can pause the video here. Um, and what I want you to do is, is try and think about what should the disclination strength for this particular disclination be. So we're going to walk through it together now. Um, and again, what I want to do is I want to answer the question, how many full rotations has this director undergone as I sweep the vector r um, from an angle theta equals 0 all the way around to theta equals 2 pi. Um, so here's my starting director. And I'm going to uh, keep sweeping. And at any given point, um, that director is always perpendicular to the vector r. Um, so I started off pointing up. By the time I've gotten over here, I'm pointing to the left. By the time I get a little further, I'm pointing down. A little further still, I'm pointing to the right, and then I'm pointing up again. So that director, again, has completed a full 2 pi radians rotation. Um, so what that means is the disclination strength in this case is also going to be plus 1. And it's plus 1 for the same reason. If I keep track of the um, direction that the disclination, uh, uh, sorry, the, the average director, um, as I sweep um, around a complete circuit, and I, I answer the question, how many full rotations has the average director undergone? It's undergone uh, 2 pi radian rotations. So 2 pi over 2 pi equals 1. So what's the difference? Both of these are disclinations that have a strength of plus, plus one, um, but they're obviously quite different. And um, the, the main difference, uh, I think I'm, I'm hoping that you're picking up on, is what is the orientation of that disclination at the starting point? So in this case, that angle um, between uh, the director and our reference direction is given by zero. In this case, it's given by pi over 2. And so we can introduce another term or constant, let's just call it c, 
where that constant is telling us what is that starting uh, orientation of the director with respect to some reference position. Uh, obviously, for this to make sense, you have to define what that reference direction would be. <clears throat> um, so you can have all kinds of different disclinations. And to, um, uh, to figure out what their disclination strength is, you do the same kind of uh, process. And you ask, as I sweep this R, a full 2 pi radians around, how many rotations has the um, director undergone? Um, so I can pause, or you can hit pause right now um, to try and resolve this one. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and do it together. So if I rotate it up to here, um, you know, I've, I've undergone some rotation. So I'm going to sort of take a snapshot of how far it's come. Um, and it's sort of spun, and then it keeps spinning. And so it's pointing this way. Um, and it's important that, you know, this R is long enough that you don't get confused by these kind of weirdly pointed ones. They're really close to that disclination core. <coughs> so I'm just going to kind of keep track of that average director as I keep rotating around. And I notice that when I come back to the beginning, <coughs> I'm pointing in a different direction from how I started. And so that's an immediate sign that the director um, cannot have rotated a complete 2 pi radians. Um, and if you keep track uh, of it, the director has actually only rotated pi radians. So it's only undergone half of that sweep. Um, and then the other thing is that because the, um, you know, the, the direction of rotation is in the opposite sense as I'm rotating uh, this, radi uh, this vector r. So this vector r, I'm kind of rotating it in a counterclockwise uh, direction, um, uh, whereas the, the um, angle that the director is rotating in is, is clockwise, it's opposite direction. Um, that means that this uh, phi tote uh, is negative pi. And so that's going to give me a disclination strength of negative 1 over 2. Um, so again, the negative uh, is what you get when the, um, the sense of rotation for the director is different from the sense of rotation um, for this vector r. <clears throat> um, and I know that I don't do a total 2 pi rotation because um, at the end of the day, when I get back to the beginning, my director is pointing in an opposite direction. So disclination strengths can be positive, they can be negative, they can be integral integer values, or they can be half integer values. Um, <clears throat> and that's, uh, I think that's what you need to know. So you can keep practicing. Um, these are examples of some other uh, common disclinations. And so it'd be good to uh, work your way through all of them uh, and see if you can come up with disc disclination strengths for each of these cases. Finally, um, you know, we're looking at a somewhat simplified uh, version because that rot uh, rotation can also happen in the out-of-plane direction. <clears throat> uh, and if this is the case, then you have to essentially define uh, disclination strengths um, around different uh, particular planes, different axes of rotation. We're not going to worry about that here. We're going to sort of think about the simple um, 2D case. Um, but in real life uh, and in three dimensions, uh, these things can get quite complicated. Uh, so finally, as I uh, mentioned before, <coughs> the uh, disclination, um, uh, disclination can be viewed uh, by looking at these things through polarized light, uh, particularly in, in cross polars, so when the uh, polarizer is perpendicular to the analyzer. Um, and uh, the uh, disclination strengths of 1 and negative 1, um, in terms of this uh, plot, both look uh, essentially identical. Um, and so all of these pl pluses are related to disclinations that have a plus 1 or a minus 1 disclination strength. Uh, minus 1 half and plus 1 half, they both uh, essentially look like uh, dumbbells. Um, and so we can see some of those 
uh, in these images as well. There's one down there, uh, there's one up here, uh, there's another one over here. Uh, okay, so we can we can think about, um, again, coming back to this idea of a Volterra construct <coughs> and thinking about it in terms of you're, you're making a cut and then you're twisting it and you can be twisting it, um, again, in sort of a positive angle or a negative angle. Um, but but the point is, is that we can we can think about a disclination um, as a set of dislocations. So think about it this way. We've made our cut. We pried that material horizontally apart. And then we backfill it um, with a wedge. Uh, so we got our Pac-Man here and he's eating uh, a slice of pizza pie. Um, but that wedge is a material where each uh, each step further out, um, I could be thinking about it as I'm adding an extra half plane of atoms. <coughs> so if I think about, <coughs> sorry, if I think about a single atomic plane, it could be extending downwards. I could be um, adding extra half a plane of atoms as I go out uh, to the right and out to the left. Uh, and if I let all of these dislocations coalesce towards the center, um, then I could treat this as um, a plane that is made up of an array of dislocations. Uh, <coughs> so disclinations are also able to be described as a plane of dislocations. So again, this is our perfect uh, material. I make a cut, I pry it open, um, and then I backfill that amount with material. So this is a disclination that has a, a disclination strength of minus one half. Um, but, but that's how we rely it back to, or we relate it back to this Voltaire construct. Alternatively, I could make uh, that cut and remove material. Um, and then uh, the, the, um, uh, the orientation of these uh, mesogens is sort of tilting towards that cut rather than away from it. Uh, and this gives us a positive <coughs> M equals one half sign. So just as before, I relied pretty strongly on a lot of um, uh, material that's uh, uh, open and available. Um, this is a particularly helpful um, uh, site that looks at disclinations, um, talks quite a bit about how they can be uh, imaged in different liquid crystals. Um, so if you have further questions about uh, disclinations, this is the first place I would direct you. All right. Thank you.